Hi, I'm August Bradley. Welcome to the Mind and Machine Show, where we explore ideas on the future. Today, we explore human longevity and life extension efforts focused on adding healthy years to a person's lifespan and even reversing the aging process. My guest is Aubrey de Grey, a leading voice in the field and chief science officer of the SENS Research Foundation, which is doing pioneering work on significantly extending healthy, active lifespans. Aubrey is a biomedical gerontologist with a degree in computer science and a PhD in biology. He is author of the book, Ending Aging, and editor-in-chief of the scientific journal, Rejuvenation Research. He's given a popular TED Talk, appeared on such outlets as 60 Minutes and the BBC, as well as having been featured in The New York Times, Fortune, The Washington Post, Popular Science, and Time Magazine, to name a few. Aubrey sees life extension as a side effect of his efforts to make people healthier, and he sees no inherent limitation to how far this could ultimately extend. We explore such concepts as the pro-aging trance, longevity escape velocity, and comprehensive damage repair that may be able to sustain a human body indefinitely. It's a fascinating discussion. As Aubrey puts it, aging is the single most important problem for humanity, and he is at the forefront of this accelerating field. If you find this show valuable, the best way to support it is by spreading the word. Social media shares are extremely helpful. The podcast is available on all podcasting platforms as well as YouTube, and soon we'll be launching a Frontier Technology newsletter. Sign up at mindandmachine.io. Now, let's dive in. Okay, so where, what is the state of the research now before we get into the game plan going forward? Is it a matter of just eliminating diseases or is there more to it? The research now is no, by no means, about eliminating diseases. Of course, I can't say that people don't die of infections anymore, but the overwhelming majority of people who do die of infections are the elderly because of aging, because of being more susceptible to infections as a result of decline in function of the immune system and such like. So um, what we need now is damage repair. We need people to be taken when they're in middle age or older and they're carrying around a lot of this damage I was talking about, these molecular and cellular changes, uh, such that they're pushing to the point, or maybe they've even passed the point where those changes have functional consequences. And then repair that damage, just eliminate it so that the body is biologically younger again. It has the amount of damage that it would have had when the person was in early adulthood. And as you can see, this is why it's common sense, because it's exactly the same thing that we already do successfully with simple man-made machines like cars or airplanes or whatever. Of course, it's more difficult with the human body because the human body is a much more complicated machine. But the the thesis of our work at Sense Research Foundation and the work that's being increasingly done by other groups around the world is that even though it is more complicated, it's not, you know, irretrievably more complicated. It's something that we are in striking distance of, of managing. Okay, so the natural process of metabolism causes damage. Uh, I've learned this from your work. And that damage accumulates over time and then causes all sorts of problems. So you're trying to allow the metabolism to do its normal process of damaging the body, but then you want to repair that damage before it leads to anything else. Is that a fair summary? summary? That's an extremely good summary, yes. So is there no role for preventative actions then? It sounds like you just let the damage happen and then we'll address it. But it, it instinctively seems like there's some advantage to trying to prevent some damage. Well, yes and no. I mean, first of all, remember that it depends what you mean by prevention. In a way, this is a kind of the sweet spot between prevention and treatment. Because yes, mm-hmm. it's a treatment in the sense that we're repairing stuff that's already been laid down. But also, we're treating people who are not yet sick. So in that sense, it's preventative. Um, and certainly, insofar as we can apply lifestyle and dietary you know, optimization so as to minimize the rate at which damage is generated, then you know, that's, that's okay. I'm not saying don't do that. And in fact, I'm certainly saying that right now, before we've actually got these damage repair therapies on, uh, uh, up to speed, um, you know, sure, it's, it makes sense to do that in order to maximize your chances of making the cut. But conversely, you can see that once we actually get these therapies really working, it will become that much less important to be responsible about how one lives 
because all it will mean if you and if you have an unhealthy lifestyle, as we would say today, is that you might need to have to, to, to submit to these therapies, these repair therapies, a little bit more often or a little bit more thoroughly than if you were terribly good. You just touched on this, but I want to dig a little deeper and really highlight it because I think it's a fundamental point that this idea of comprehensive damage repair enables w when this becomes viable. It's not just a matter of the, wherever if a 50 year old is at that state, you maintain it. This actually implies you could reverse their, their biological age. You could put them into a healthier state than they are at the point. Is that a fair? That's absolutely right. And actually, it surprises me that people have to ask this. And, you know, and the people, you know, sometimes people genuinely don't get that when I describe this. I mean, what part of the word repair is hard to understand? <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. So, I mean, what's the time frame? Is this, is this a, a five, 10 year thing? Is this a 50? I mean, I know it's impossible to say with certainty, but what's your sense? So, of course, I have to be awfully careful to ensure that people understand how speculative any prediction of time frame really is. Um, I think that we have a 50-50 chance of getting all of this really working, all of the components, you know, developed individually and, and not only that, but also combined together in a way that doesn't you know, have unintended consequences um, within about 20 years from now. But I think there's at least a 10% chance that we won't get there for 100 years because there's <laughs> always the possibility that we'll hit new unforeseen roadblocks. The thing is, of course, so what? You know, I mean, a 50% chance is quite enough to be worth fighting for. for um, sure. And moreover, I think it's also very important to appreciate that because this is a divide and conquer strategy where we have these many different types of damage that we need to address, some of them are easier than others. Some of them are further along than others. And indeed, some of the relevant repair therapies are already in clinical trials. So, um, and, and a lot of the others will be in clinical trials within the next year or two. So we're moving pretty fast now. And what I believe is that we are going to reach a point within, I would say, the next five years where everyone can see it coming. You know, there's still going to be a lot of work to do, but the, you know, the, the pro-aging trance for that matter, and certainly the skepticism with regard to whether this could ever be done, the, you know, the implicit assumption that defeating aging is equivalent to perpetual motion, um, you know, that will just go away, and it will go away very suddenly.